We picked this Seth Thomas grandfather clock up for $25 at the thrift store last week, and it needs a little bit of TLC, but I think we're up to the task. Originally, it was a little bit more expensive. We can tell it sat at the thrift store for two weeks because it had a tag on it that said 22 and then one that said over 24. So we're gonna scrape off the tag and reveal what it originally was sold for. Looks like it was $50. Nobody wanted it at that, but $25 was a great price. This clock isn't actually that old. Old. The finish isn't terrible on it, but the mechanism does not work. It's got a few extra pieces here and there. This is actually metal, so we'll leave that on there, but I'm gonna switch out this clock mechanism. We're gonna paint this and do a different kind of Mora style finish on this. So we did some research. This particular model in some areas can sell for upwards of $2,500 if it's in good working condition. Ours is not in good working condition. And in some places in good working condition, you'd be lucky if you could get $100 for them. So it really just depends on your area. And I think it's just wood up underneath. Oh, it's a lot of wood. Oh, that's a lot of mechanisms. Yes, it is a lot of mechanisms. We'll leave the back part attached. Oh no, I just broke this. Dad. I'm gonna glue it back together because we didn't want that old busted felt whatever that was in there. things that we absolutely love about old clocks, especially those old clocks that we saw when we were in Texas at Round Top, the original Mora finishes had texture. So first things first, we're gonna be using DIY paint and our trusty salt wash to make a texture base coat. And then the next step, we've got a color milk paint we haven't used in a long time. We're using Ocean because it's a yummy blue green. It'll look great with the white wax. And we'll probably wind up doing like some stenciling of some flowers it's gonna be and awesome. pastels. Well, yeah, I think it's gonna be good, so. So it doesn't clump when the wet paint's on there. And I do paint first because I like to put the powder in and stir it and gauge the texture. I do it by my eyeballs. Well, I eyeballed this. You put way too much salt wash in here. I put a lot because I want a heavy salt wash on this okay. thing. It's big, it's a big piece. I don't want stiff peaks though. I want more just like basic texture for nooks and crannies. Okay, this is just getting a textured first coat. I'm gonna brush the salt wash on. I know a lot of times we stipple it, but in this case it's not quite as stiff. A lot of old paint has yummy texture and so to mimic that, you've gotta get some chunks in there. You can see right here how thick that is. Do and then a little just... stippling so they can see it. Oh, there you go. Some places get more than others. And this is just the first coat. We'll probably have another coat or two of paint on here. And then we're also going to be putting on stencils and wax and all kinds of fun layers. So this is a very shiny piece and this is gonna give us some great texture for all the different layers to stick to and not just slide off. See what I'm saying about that crack down here? Bam, it's gone. <laughs> is it filler, is it paint? The next step is I'm just going to take that same brush and whatever salt wash I have down at the bottom and I'm just going to pounce on some weathered wood. It's going to be a few different colors. I like to just do accents, areas where it might normally be darker and it'll come out a little bit when we wet distress. Didn't really start to see that texture picking up now that it's starting to dry a little bit. Yeah, it's not quite all the way dry which is fine. Next up, I'm gonna mix up some milk paint. We're using Sweet Pickens Ocean. We're gonna not use any extra bombs, so we don't know how much it'll chip. If you're worried about chipping, you can always add that in there. With the salt wash, that gives us a great base coat. Comes in a powder form, and I'm just gonna pour this whole batch in there. This is a, this makes a pint. 
Last week we didn't use extra bond and it backfired on us. Oh yeah. If the piece was shiny, we didn't use any extra bond. We sprayed it on and it all came off. I'll have Zeb drop some pictures in here so you can see them. All right, so this is just gonna make a pint. This is a quart jar, so the water's gonna go about halfway. Warm water makes a big difference. I like to go a little bit at a time so I can check for thickness. I buy all my immersion blenders at the thrift store. This one was five bucks. I really like ocean. It's a nice smoky green, gray, blue. All of my favorite tones combined together. All right, it is time to start putting some ocean on here. Let it sit for about five, 10 minutes. And I'm just, you know, it's gonna be a little runny. I've got it on the thin side so that it'll go over this wash pretty good. All those bumps and textures underneath this wash are just gonna come right on out with that light color and we're gonna get some of those grays. And then we're gonna do some stenciling over the top of this. It's gonna be good. You can really see kind of where it has the highs and lows where the dry brush is. You can see all that texture. And when we distress this back off, that's coming back through. I'm just gonna be using my orbital sander with 220 sandpaper to lightly go over, take down some of the peaks and bring over some of the underlying colors. Then we'll probably do a little bit of wet distressing and then go from there. This area here, the orbital would not fit in and definitely take off too much. So I'm just using the leftover sandpaper for my orbital and hand sanding it. We'll probably also do some wet distress. All right, so I'm just gonna use this damp rag to pull off the dust, but also to wet distress and pull out some of the dark. If I was to try to do this with the sandpaper, I would go through all the way through the dark paint and the dark stain to the light part, and I want it to be dark. Okay, I'll hold it, you go. We use the JRB French grain sack stencil. We'll link this particular stencil and any other stencils we use in the description box below. All right. Ta da! That's pretty I like good. It. I'm thinking I'm just going to do this on the underside, but only go to like right here. Okay. And then I think that's good. Gotta stay here for some time. So I'm just using clear wax over this. My wax brush has a little white wax on it, which totally fine. And By the time gonna... we get to the top, it'll fade out. That's right. And we can always come back and add more like white wax and dark wax to age it. And I might even use some of the new DIY gold gilding wax, which just came in for me to play with today. clear wax on here and we can control this a little bit. I've got some DIY dark wax and I'm just gonna kinda hit some of these details here where it would naturally kinda get dust and, and wear and things like that down in those cracks from being polished. It's like we're running in circles Going around every day in the mail, I just got Golden Roll. It's a gold gilding wax from DIY Paint. It's on pre-order now along with the new pigments at jamierayvintage.com. And I'm gonna put on a little gold wax. It's kind of like jewelry, you know, a little, little shiny shine. It almost looks like if there had been gold leaf or something and it had worn off over time. Are we gonna bring some of that back too? Yeah, I'm just gonna go on top of the edges here. Maybe up here a little. What do you think? Yeah. 
it doesn't take very much. It's shiny. You want me to hit this side over here? Yeah, go ahead and grab. Careful, like don't push hard. And she liked the gold so much, she started just hitting all the details. Well, you know. <laughs> more is more. All right, we were going to paint over this and do a stencil. We have a stencil that would have fit on here really well. So the detail is pressed down into the metal and it's got that good old patina. It's got a lot of age and wear to it already. It's gonna fit perfectly with the paint job we put on here. I cleaned it up with the magic eraser, but it still left quite a bit of patina. So let's see what it looks like together. Can you see all of the cloth in my flip-flop booties? Yeah. And my pajama pants? <laughs> and your I Birkenstocks? I started out in jeans, but pajama pants just felt right. This clock is legit so good. Like 25 bucks at the thrift I'm so, store. I'm so happy. It was so broken because the components and things weren't working inside that it had been marked down from 50 to 25. I think the paint job is everything. It's layers and layers. It's taken us a while to really perfect this look and so excited that the DIY golden rule wax just came in like legit UPS brought it while I was out front sanding it off. So it's the perfect finishing touch. That is just on pre-order. We will link all the products. There's a lot of them, I know. It takes a lot to get the layered. We're gonna link those below for you so that way you can recreate this look. If you're interested in buying this clock, you can hit up jrvhome.com and our furniture collection. We've got all of our one-of-a-kind pieces there, including shipping in the 48 contiguous states. jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products that we use today. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Cause we're both